Okay, just because I can, I'm going to take a 360-degree photo up here. All right, everyone, one, two, three, smile. All right, excellent. Now I can start. I, I'm not Canadian. Okay. This is my grandfather. And like most Australian men born in the 1920s, he was a man's man. He was stoic and he was quiet. But even so, all of us grandkids loved him. He told us the best stories, and he did magic. I can remember as a kid, sitting there, watching him do his one magic trick over and over again, and thinking, there is no way I could do that. So, for you, Da, I'm now going to do some magic. And because I'm a risk taker, I'm now going to do something that's never, ever been done at a Learning to Talk before. I'm going to include the audience. So I've got one, two, three people. Can you come up here? Quick, let's go. Let's do some magic. Let's give a big round of applause. All right. OK. So, sir, can you come and stand over here, please? Sir, can you come and stand here? And ma'am, could you please stand here? Now, I take it that you've all seen the soaring a woman in half trick. Yes? Yeah? This is my... Obviously, they haven't. This is my version. Okay, so what I'm actually going to do is I've got my lovely, strong ropes here. What I'm going to do is we're going to pass the ropes through a human being. Okay. So, are you ready for this? No. Okay. All right. So, what I'm going to do is I've got my ropes here, and actually, um, because I don't want any rope burn, I'm just going to put this over here. Gary, is that all right? And because last time I did this, there was a little bit of blood, I just don't want to, you know, you've got such lovely shoes. So if you can just hold those two ropes there, please. If you can just hold that on your stomach, please, nice and tight, and you can hold those. Now, it doesn't really look tight enough, so I might just grab this rope here, and I might grab this rope here, and I'll just wrap them around. You grab that one, and you grab, how are you feeling, snug? Very ah, I love it, excellent. Okay, so on the count of three... Both of my participants and my victim in the middle here, you're going to pull as hard as you can. Is that okay? All right, here we go. It's been a while, and there, there was a problem last time, but anyway. One, two, three! Da, 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 da. Whoa, look at that. Can you give me a big round of applause? <laughs> Rope through a human being. How good was that? Thank you. Get back into the square. It's not really hard these days to look on the internet and find a presentation, a t-shirt, a book, or a blog post selling the idea that teachers are magicians, or that teaching is magic. But I'm here today to actually sabotage that idea, to tell you that teachers are not magicians, and teaching has nothing to do with magic. So here are my three rules for not being a magical teacher. Rule number one, don't talk too much. Magicians love to talk. They employ something called patter. Patter is when you bore your audience or you distract them so that you can do something else. I believe a good teacher doesn't talk too much and they'd rather have their students doing then listening. A really good friend of mine says, if you can't tell me your plan in 30 seconds, you don't have a plan. It's exactly the same with teaching. Rule number two. Let your kids know that they can be better than you. Magicians love the limelight. They like to be the centre of attention. Magicians are know-it-alls and experts, and they never, ever make mistakes. I believe a good teacher would rather be the coach on the side of the field rather than the hero scoring the winning goal. I believe a good teacher... <laughs> I believe a good teacher would rather learn along with their students and show them that they're not afraid to make mistakes. I believe a good teacher wants their students thinking, hey, I can do what my teacher's doing. Actually, I can probably do that better than my teacher. 
Rule number three. Share, share, share. Magicians are secretive people. They don't like to share. There's actually a magician's code that says you're not allowed to reveal how you do your magic tricks. I believe good teachers share. They share their resources, their ideas, and their knowledge. They write blogs, they tweet, they run staff meetings, and they're not afraid to help anyone. So, in the spirit of sharing, and to prove that I'm a teacher, not a magician, I'm actually going to reveal how I did my magic trick. I'm going to break that magician's code. So there goes my magic career. Okay, so first of all, what I did was I got some tiny little bits of cotton and I wrapped them around my two bits of rope. Then, using my patter, while you were distracted, I managed to flick it around in my hand so it looked like this. Then when I tied it around my victim's waist, my two ropes were like that, I wrapped it around the back as you saw, and before you knew it, so it was quite easy for my assistants to pull the ropes and make it look like the rope went through Gary. I'm not magic at all, it's just a trick. And I don't like tricks when it comes to teaching. So, please remember my three rules. Share your good stuff. Don't talk too much. And don't be afraid to let your students know that they can be better than you. Finally, I'd like to share one of my favorite quotes about teaching, something that made me think like this in the first place. Teaching's not my job, it's my passion. Getting better at it, that's my job. <laughs>